just one more run with the laser Doppler Opper Doppler scope and uh, we should be done here. We'll have a really good idea about the droplet size this nozzle produces. It's a good thing your grant money came in. Two photon Doppler Opper 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 scope, you don't come cheap. Well, when we've got all the numbers, we'll have a much better idea about how droplets interact on plant surfaces. Yeah, well, we gotta wait for that thing to cool down anyway. You feel like a snack? Well, running a microwave near a laser during a solar eclipse, what could possibly go wrong? Do you feel tingly? Yeah! Our story begins with a sudden blinding flash. A laboratory accident involving microwave popcorn and a solar eclipse shrinks two application technologists. Bewildered, Jason and Tom look around to get their bearings. Someone approaches. As tiny as they've just become, they brace themselves for... My Woman! Woman. Guide, Guide to the world, to the world of, spray of Spray Droplets! Gentlemen, you've been shrunk to the size of the spray droplets you research. Let's explore how spray behaves once it leaves the nozzle. I'll be your guide. I'm Micron Woman. They follow this mysterious superhero through a wormhole into a soybean canopy. As they look around, their tiny size allows them to see things they could never see before. Micron Woman explains. A nozzle breaks spray mix into droplets. Their diameter is measured in microns, which are one one-thousandth of a millimeter. A single nozzle creates a range of droplet sizes. Look at the spray pattern from a typical flat fan nozzle. Notice that the droplets are coarser at the edges and finer in the middle. Coarser droplets move fast and in straight lines. If they're too coarse, they can bounce or run off the target. This can be a problem on hard to wet surfaces. Suddenly, like fine droplets, Jason and Tom are caught up in the air turbulence created by the spray. Hold on tight, guys. Finer droplets lose momentum and move unpredictably. Although many are lost to drift, those that reach the target tend to stay there. Most conventional hollow drift cone or flat fan nozzles produce finer droplets. We need to be very careful about drift when we use them. Well, what is the best droplet size to use? The ideal droplet size depends on the location, orientation, and surface texture of the target you want to hit. For example, Coarser droplets don't penetrate dense broadleaf canopies as well as finer droplets. Suddenly, Tom and Jason encounter giant cutworms in the canopy. They fear for their very lives! Hey, leave those cutworms alone. I need them to travel. If your target is deep inside, increasing spray volume, slowing down, and moving to a finer spray quality will increase the odds. However, without some form of air assist, too fine a spray will increase drift. Hitting smooth ground with a pre-emergent herbicide isn't difficult. Coarser spray is a good choice as long as you use enough water to increase the number of droplets. But hitting vertical targets like grass or spraying an insecticide or fungicide on the underside of a broad leaf is harder. Fascinated, they watch as a dual fan slowly passes over a wheat head, giving panoramic coverage. Generally, coarser sprays can miss or run off vertical targets. Finer sprays will stick as long as they don't evaporate or drift away first. The important thing is to avoid droplets that are either too big or too small. That's how we minimize rebound and drift. Even when the spray hits the target, the interaction between droplet and target surface has a big impact on spray effectiveness. Sometimes they don't stay where we want them to. The surface texture of the target is also an issue. A hairy target like a tomato leaf or the awns on wheat can capture finer spray before it gets to its destination. Waxy leaves like cabbage or hardened leaves in dry conditions can have waxy surfaces that cause spray to pool or run off. 
Tom and Jason push down on a droplet that has less contact, fruitlessly trying to get it to touch the leaf. What we want is an even distribution of spray on the target with a high degree of contact. Less contact, on the left, is typically undesirable. More contact from spreading, on the right, is preferable. But be careful, too much spread can cause runoff and faster evaporation. So, could we add adjuvants to the tank to change how drops behave? In some cases, we might want spray to run into growing tips like canola or onion, so we might add a spreader. In others, like a waxy or vertical target, we might consider a sticker. Some adjuvants even claim to reduce drift. Most products are already formulated with the stickers and spreaders needed for retention. Unless the label says otherwise, be cautious about adding them to the tank mix. Tom and Jason are excited to learn more, but their adventure is almost at an end. Well, gentlemen, the eclipse is almost over, and so is our time together. Tom and Jason look down at themselves as they start to glow and vibrate. Remember, nozzle and pressure choice are the easiest and most impactful way for the operator to match the spray to the conditions. The operator gets the droplet to the target, and chemistry works to improve retention once it hits the target. See you next, See you next time. time! Did that just happen? Yeah, I'm not admitting it to anyone. Uh. Want some popcorn? Yeah, sure. Mmm, delicious.